Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yulia Chorna. We are a great education center in Kyiv, Ukraine. Uh, I always ask you uh, where you are from, but this time I, ha I decided to change the question. So today is the 4th of April, uh, the 4th of 4th, 2024. Uh, some people believe that this is the magic date. Uh, if you believe in such things, um, what's your lucky number, please? Let us know in the chat box and then we will check like if you can hear us well, if you can see us well, just type your lucky number in the chat box. Number four, okay, <laughs> seven, good, cool, 13. Okay. It's 4th April, it's 4th April 2024 and it's also 4 p.m. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, and with us today is Natalia Leshko. She is our speaker for today's webinar. That's why we gathered uh, actually for a session, uh, which Natalia is going to deliver in a couple of minutes when I stop talking. Hello, Natalia. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, actually. Uh, and um, before Natalia starts uh, cooking, by the way, I saw your stories on Facebook where you cooked a, a very nice uh, breakfast. And uh, Natalia is very good at, at cooking English lessons. That's why we are here today. Uh, I have to say something very important. So, guys, um, before we actually move on, uh, you are going to get your certificates. Don't worry about this. Uh, all of you are, have been registered and uh, this webinar is recorded, uh, but uh, active participation is also uh, appreciated. After the webinar, uh, when we upload the recording uh, to your personal cabinets, you will have to take a very short test, uh, just five questions, it's a piece of cake for each of you, and you will get your certificate in your personal cabinet. Uh, so remember about this. And now actually, uh, one more important thing that uh, we were not supposed to tell you, but, uh, sorry, not this one. Okay, uh, <laughs> during this webinar, uh, it wasn't announced. We are going uh, to choose the person uh, who will ask the most captivating question to Natalia about her session. Yeah, and uh, so you have to participate, ask your questions, uh, be very active. And this is the course uh, from Great University um, Online Tools for English Language Teacher uh, for English Language Teaching. And Natalia is going to pick the one lucky teacher who is going to win this course uh, today. So yes, and she is holding the certificate. And yes, and you will get the certificate if you are uh, very good at, at asking questions. So uh, listen attentively, uh, participate and ask your questions uh, in the end of the of this event. Okay, so now it's time for me to stop talking. <laughs> yeah, and uh, introduce Natalia. She has all possible teaching qualifications. She is a teacher trainer, uh, a very active uh, person on social media. And um, she is really good at... Uh, delivery reinforcements about teaching young learners and teenagers. And actually we are going to cook some activities uh, to develop productive skills of your uh, students today. Uh, these are going to be hands-on ideas that you are going to use in your classrooms. Um, and uh, I'm giving the floor to Natalia and it's your time to shine. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia, for that flattering introduction. Uh, it's like after these words, I don't know whether actually I can do these things. I'm joking, of you course. Can. I know I can. Yes, I've planned that. But uh, there is never, I mean, never enough. Okay. Probably I will start with this. As uh, you've mentioned that I've got all possible qualifications. Believe me, there are more. <laughs> the recently we heard, probably that was the first April joke, but recently we heard that um, there are actually, we, we were invited for the webinar, uh, how to get ready uh, to pass the exam for D1 and D2 level. So we were like, what? D1 and T D2, what's that? And like, and we started Googling actually. So hopefully, luckily it was a uh, first April, June um, joke, but probably, I mean, these things are going to exist. 
uh, sooner or later, or there are so many other qualifications that we can actually get apart from Cambridge qualifications like CELTA, Delta, TKT, or h 12 courses, any other courses. Um, it's a good idea to develop in other fields as well, like neuro language coach, for example, which I've got recently, or any other qualifications like psychology degree probably, or um, a workshop in this, you know? When we actually uh, say development, CPD, professional development, yeah? It's not only a seminar or a webinar on methodology. It can be your language development as well. Uh, and here again, I will strongly recommend you great university center and great courses as a, as a language course. You can go there and enjoy studying with them. And the reason why we have decided to have this course, uh, to, to have this webinar, sorry, um, it's also to speak a little bit of great university because one of my greatest tutors that I've ever had have ever had now works for great university. And this name is going to be pronounced a lot of time today. And um, I would like to check you, I mean, whether we are on the same page or not. So can you guess the name? Just write down the name. It's a female name. So write it in the chat. Who do you think this person is? Maybe you know this lady, maybe you're not. Or you can simply uh, predict what the female name is. Anna, no. No, jo no. Okay. Julia, no. Okay, Natalia, no. Okay. Helen. Bravo. Olena, bravo. Yes, yes, yes. My favorite tutor ever is Olena Lesitsa. And that's why I strongly recommend you great university because of Olena Lesitsa, because of other courses as well, but because of Olena Lesitsa specifically. And um, you've probably read on uh, social media accounts and Yulia said that, that today is going to be a demo lesson. So you will be my students, guinea pigs. Okay, I do apologize for that. <laughs> because you are going to be primary students. And uh, this demo lesson was part of my course, IHCYLT course, which is similar to Delta, or CELTA, sorry, 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 CELTA, but teaching young, young learners and teenagers. And this lesson was um, part of my course and I received the best feedback from Elena as above standard lesson. It's like an extremely good lesson. This is like best of the best. That's why I decided that I want to share these ideas with you because this is not only a good lesson that I want to show off. Of course not, because this is a universal language uh, lesson. You can easily adapt it to your students, to your needs. I'm gonna show you and ask this question at the end. How can you verify this lesson? How can you change that, okay? So this is like a skeleton of the lesson. And here we go. We are going to have a look at the objectives of today's seminar, okay, webinar. So first of all, we are going to go through hands-on activities, minimum preparation. I'm not saying that I'm a lazy teacher, <laughs> but I appreciate my time a lot. And I know that you do the same. We don't have this luxury, you know, to spend hours on preparation, lesson planning, just for one lesson. So we need things that are going to work with this group, this group, this student, this student, and we can easily adapt those things. I love minimum preparation activities. So here is my turn where I can contribute. The second thing is techniques on how to inspire and support students' communication. That's why it's called empowering young voices. So, I think that I don't need to stop here for a long time and explain that we're learning English just to communicate with others. I mean, we need it for speaking. That's why it's our main skill. So speaking, how to promote that speaking, how to inspire students, how to push students to speak. And finally, how to accommodate mixed stability classroom with the same task. Again, 
This because we have the minimum preparation hands-on activities. It doesn't mean that you go with a pile of activities to the classroom and you give this to Sasha and this to Olena because Olena is a stronger student and Sasha is a weaker student. No. These students are going to struggle. I mean, Sasha is probably going to be embarrassed. Like, why do I have a, a difficult task? I want an easy one, like Olena, or vice versa. Olena is, um, again, uh, pissed off because she wants to try something more challenging. So it doesn't work, you see? That's why bringing different activities into the classroom for different students doesn't work. The students might be offended. That's why I prefer bringing one activity, but this activity is going to help both students, weaker and stronger students. So every single lesson, every single thing that we do in the classroom, and not actually only in the classroom, we need to start with the question, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this activity? Why are we doing these things? Why are we singing this particular song? When you start with a question why, it's going to help you to plan your lesson effectively and cater to your students' needs. If you're going to answer the question, because my student, this student or that student needs it, then good, tick, you're going to achieve the lesson aim. If you can't answer this question, why do you are doing this for this specific group of students, probably you need to forget about this activity for a while, Okay, probably not now, not today, not with this group. If you can, then go, then you're on the right path. And when we start with why, again, I'm gonna um, give you a very brief things, uh, introduction of a lesson, yeah? You know that from the title, this is going to be a grammar and vocabulary lesson. So we call it systems lessons, yeah? These are systems, grammar and vocabulary. A very typical classical lesson plan or lesson frame, yeah, of these types of lessons. So we start with the leading, then we go with the presentation, MPF or MFP stages, then we go with the recognition, quick recognition task. Here we cross check or double check whether the students remember the words, whether actually the presentation was successful or not. And finally, we move on to practice, where we apply that knowledge and we produce the language. We go to production. These letters, as you see, this is the lesson plan, very classical one, PPP. Olena prefers to use it a different variation. She says MMM. This is not because of her age and my age and Yula's age that we remember this abbreviation from the Soviet Union. Of course not. But this is what applies for young learners more. And a man, this is like meeting the language. So you meet it, you see it for the very first time. Then the second M is manipulating the language. So you actually play with it, you practice it. And finally, making the language your own. So you actually use it. So again, a traditional version, MM, uh, PPP, Olena's version, MMM. I love it, MMM. Here, we have MPF and MFP stages. Again, this is meaning, presentation, and form, and meaning, form, sorry, sorry, pronunciation. Meaning, pronunciation, form, or meaning, form, pronunciation. Why do I have it in this, I mean, with a slash? We either play it this way, or this way. Any suggestions? You can quickly write the word in the chat. Or you can unmute yourself probably and tell me. This is going to be faster. Let's try to unmute yourself. Can you speak? One, two, three. Nobody wants to speak. We are thinking. <laughs> ah, you are thinking. Okay. That's a good idea. Thank you. How to make new meaning more presentable? Probably, okay, meaning form pronunciation or meaning pronunciation form. Why do I have it in a different? Maybe it's nice to combine uh, it, like answer. not to be monotonal or so something like that. Maybe, Vera, maybe like that. Any other, somebody else wanted to say as maybe, well. Maybe it depends uh, on what we are presenting. When we're presenting grammar, for example, 
then we present a meaning, form, and then pronunciation. When we are presenting vocabulary, then it is more con convenient to be to present the meaning, pronunciation, and then the form. Marina, I love it. Thank you very much for mentioning it. So, meaning, form, pronunciation. This is for grammar lesson, dear teachers. Meaning, form, pronunciation. We understand why are we using this? Then we see the sentence, the form, and only after that we practice pronunciation because the structure is longer. It's very difficult to pronounce the sentence many times without seeing it. Once I start saying the sentence, I don't remember the ending. That's why we have it, meaning, form, pronunciation. For, grammar le for vocabulary lesson, if vice versa, we start with the meaning, it's always with the meaning. Then we practice pronunciation. And only after that, we see the words, meaning pronunciation form. Because again, when we start, when we know the words, we start pronouncing it, we don't see the form yet. So we make less mistakes. I'm gonna demonstrate it during the lesson and I'm gonna stop on for a second on that slide for you. Okay, and I have a question about the recognition stage. Again, in the lesson plan, this is something like two, three minutes maximum. Maximum, it's very brief, very short. But here I have double check or cross check. My question to you is, what's the difference actually? I cross check the calculation, I double check the calculation. This is my uh, suggestion that have a look at it, cross check and double check. Do you agree or disagree? You can unmute yourself and tell me if you agree or disagree or use the chat. Vice versa. Yes, it's vice versa, Vera. Absolutely correct. So double check, you use the same activity or the same technique, you simply check it for the second time. That's why it's called double checking, yeah? But cross-checking means that to compare your answer with a different source means that you check it in a different way. For example, again, how can I apply it? With double-checking, I do the same activity, but not one student answers, but another student answer. But this is the same. Cross-checking is like I show you the picture and ask you to tell me the words. And then I show you the words and tell you, for example, draw a picture. This is a different technique, you see? You change it a little bit, cross-checking. So, I really like that we're going smoothly on the same page. Now, since we're going to have a lesson, and this is a full lesson, demo lesson, what's the lesson aim then of my lesson? Again, when we speak about the lesson aim, I have a lesson on parts of body and has got structure. I'm not going to stop here, how to plan a lesson. But again, the person who taught me to do this is Oven Lissitsa. And this is the best way I uh, learned it. I do have here one of my colleagues, a uh, very good teacher. Her name is Olga. Hello, Olga. And she told me, yes, that finally, after my webinar on lesson planning, she learned how to write a lesson aim. Again, that was after Valerio Lissitsa tutorial. So have a look at it. It, it looks wordy, yeah, it's kind of long one, but once you look at it, have a look, read it. Do you actually visualize the lesson in your head? Have a look, by the end of the lesson, my students will be able to describe their own creatures while designing potato men using parts of body, vocabulary, Together with the adjectives, tiny, googly, oh, sorry, googly, uh, flat, crooked, wavy, and bold, and the grammar structure has got orally and in written. This is a flexi stage. Orally is the main focus. Written is, we'll see how it goes with the student. I mean, it, it's a real lesson, yeah? I had it many times. In the context of potato festival. So if you look at the lesson name again, we have these things included, the main skill, the final task, vocabulary and grammar that I will be using and my students will be using during the lesson. I have the focus, how are we doing this, orally or in written, and I finally have the context. Once you have it, parts of body has got 
oh my God, this can be a different lesson. So many lessons. But once you see this, okay, from this lesson aim, I understand that my students will be designing their own potato man, their own creature, and by the end of the lesson, they're going to describe it. They're going to speak about it or they're going to write about it because I have it orally and in written form. And again, the context can be different. Yula told you that we're going to cook. Well, that's because it is connected with food, potato, but it's not cooking. It's a potato festival. So probably we're going to speak about different potatoes a potato is a lady, a potato is a policeman, and many, 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 many others. Hmm, jobs are not concluded, so just probably parts of body. And have a look. Parts of body is not actually the new vocabulary here. Together with the adjectives. So the focus is on the adjectives. Tiny, goggly, flat crooked, wavy, and bald. Parts of body we revise. You see how we change the focus? And the grammar structure has got. Again, if you write in the lesson plan, in the lesson aim, only the new vocabulary without the grammar structure, hmm, parts of body. Do I use there is, there are? Do I use the present simple? Do I use it is or they are? What do I use? It's very important to understand what grammar structure goes together with this vocabulary because we don't speak words. We speak sentences. That's why we need a grammar structure together with the word. So finally, we have the context. We have the focus, the final task, designing, designing potato men yeah? and describing the creatures. Let's go. I want to use this man for uh, this part of the webinar, yeah? Again, Lena told us to <laughs> this. Lena taught us how to plan the lesson effectively going backwards, like Steve Jobs. You look backwards, you start, what does it mean to look backwards? What does it, what does it mean, backward planning? It means that you start your focus from the final activity. So actually, you see how it's connected? When you have the lesson name, you see the final activity. This is how it goes. Once you are inspired for a lesson, I want to use it in my lesson. My students are going to do this. How do you plan your lesson? You have this and you go backward. From this activity, you go to the beginning of the lesson. So you start planning. Aha, uh -huh. my students are going to create a potato man, they're going to draw it or probably make it using real potato. I'm spoiling it now. Now, how do they do it? What do they say before it? So before they actually say a paragraph, probably they need to practice a sentence. Before practicing a sentence, they will probably need to practice a word. And finally, we start with the leading. We set up the context. We are going on a potato festival. So this is how it goes. Once you have the inspiration, I'm gonna use this activity in the classroom. My students are going to do to say or to write this. What happens before? What happens before? This is called scaffolding. So we help our students to actually, we support them. We gradually guide them through one activity to another activity, yeah? So what happens uh, one step back, one step back, and when you have the lesson plan ready, then you look forward. Is it cohesive? Yeah. Is it coherent? So does this actually happen? Meaning that you introduce the words, your students know the words, and then you the next task, you say to your students, now tell me about your potato man. What? Teacher, I can't tell you because I know separate words. Ah, so we need to make it like one step forward, one step forward, you see? So it doesn't happen. This thing doesn't happen that you see on the picture. And we've got the lesson structure, the lesson frame. We've got the lesson aim. We've got the lesson plan ready. And 
You know what happens in the classroom? We know that we have our students actually, apart from the activity, apart from the inspiration, apart from the lesson plan, we need to teach our students. We don't teach our lesson plan. And when we see the students, this is what happens. We've got different students. We've got a zebra, a fish, an eagle, a bear, and a duck in the classroom. And the language that we need to teach them represents this. Imagine that you have a class of students like this, and you need to teach them running, swimming, climbing, and flying, uh, flying. like listening, speaking, writing, and reading. Zebra can swim and can't fly. Fish can't run and can climb and can't fly. It can only can swim. The eagle, the bear, the duck have different skills, you know, developed. How can we teach this class? And here we go. We have a mixed ability classroom. So we start thinking about our students. We have different students, auditory students, visual, kinesthetic, so we need to have a little bit of listening. We need to uh, have a visual lesson and we need to move a little bit in the lesson so that to cater to kinesthetic students. Or we need to touch something during the lesson. So it should be visual, visual yeah? We touch the potato. Uh, we then have mixed ability classroom, meaning that we have Olemka and Ivan, or probably here we have two boys that represent the strongest student, let it be Ivan, and the weakest student, let it be Sashko, okay? That's why they have one with the glasses and another one without any glasses. But I mean, both of them are smart, but just Ivan is a little bit stronger, Sashko is a little bit weaker. And again, we need to conduct a lesson for both of them. And finally, we have different multiple intelligences. It's like we have the students who love music, who love nature, who love math, future IT guys. How to have a lesson for all of them? I know it's a nightmare. If you focus at least on these two things, like you grade your tasks. Grade your tasks means that it's you not only grade your language, but graded task means that you can use the same task with both categories with senior students and with stronger students and with the weaker students. And if you cater to types of learners, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, you are fine. At least these two things. Multiple intelligence is probably a gut level, okay? <laughs> or probably a separate level, lesson. But these two things, we, will, we focus on this during every single lesson. Here we go. Let's enough of theory, let's jump into practice, a demo lesson. So you're now going to be my students. This means that you have to unmute yourself, some of you, okay? Who is ready, who can afford this to speak a little bit. You're going to tell me some words to repeat after me. You're going to be my students. Your level is pre-A1. You are eight, nine years old, something like that, okay? So please grade your language from C1, C2, B2 to pre-A1, okay? Let's try. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. 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 Yes, hello. Today, we are going to have a very interesting lesson. We are actually going on a potato festival. Potato festival. This festival is going to be full of different potatoes. Big potatoes, small potatoes, with a lot of eyes, or probably with an eye, okay? With teeth or without teeth. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So, let's play the game. What's this? It's a potato. Yes. The Look at that. Look at it. My potatoes got big eyes. What can you say, Olga? Imagine that I throw the potato to Olga. Mm -hmm. uh, it can. It, it has got uh, a red tongue. Very good. Thank you, Natalia. Your potato. 
uh, it has got nice ears. Very good. Anastasia, your potato. Okay. Let's try another one. Marina, your potato. It has got beautiful eyes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you've got the idea. Now, look at this. It's not a potato, yeah? But is it a boy or a girl? A girl. 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 Look at her hair. Listen. Wavy hair. Wavy hair. Wavy hair. Repeat. Wavy hair. Wavy hair. Wavy hair. Wavy hair. Very good. Wavy hair. It's got wavy hair. It's got, it's wavy, got wavy, wavy hair. hair. Yeah. There we go. It's got wavy hair. It's, it's got, got wavy, 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 wavy hair. hair. Bravo. Now, have a look. Wavy hair. Again, wavy, 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 wavy hair. hair. How wavy many hair. words? How two many words? Two words. Two, two, two words. words. Good. And look what we have here. W or V? W. W. Very good. Wavy hair. Very good. Okay. What about this? Is it a boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. What about his hair? Is it wavy hair? He's no bald. hair. No <laughs> hair. Exactly like this. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Who is doing the exercise with the kids? Okay. Uh -huh. Yes, I got it. Yeah. Who's that? I spotted the, <laughs> the little devil in the classroom. Now, listen, it's got a bald hat. It's got a bald, a bald, hat. bald hat. A bald hat. A bald, a bald, bald hat. hat. It's got a bald hat. It's got, it's got a bald, it's got bald, a bald, bald, bald hat. hat. Very good. Look, look what we have here. How many words? Three. Three, Three. Three words. Very good. We've got a. Eh. A, a bald head altogether. A bald head. That's a why it's important hat. to practice pronunciation before you show a form because of the word bald. You say bald, you don't bald. say bald. It's bald. You see? Bald. Once your bald. students see it's written, they start reading. And if you show the word first and then practice pronunciation, guarantee you're going to have mispronunciation. Okay? That's yes. why we show the picture, we check pronounce. the meaning, and then we pronounce it. And only final stage we show it, okay? Mm -hmm. If you have a flashcard, you can have it like you show it and then you unfold and you show the form, okay? Let's have a look at this one. What about these eyes? Are they big or small? Big, big eyes. eyes. Very big. big. Very, Very big. big. Very big. Very big eyes. <laughs> Super potato, yes. <laughs> so we say, listen, goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. It's got goggly eyes. It's got, it's got, got goggly eyes. eyes. Let's have a look. How many letters G? Two. Three. Uh, how many? Three. Two, three. three. <laughs> <laughs> it's not googly. It's goggly. Goggly oh, eyes. Goggly. How many letters O? One. 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 Goggly. Goggly. Okay. Goggly eyes. How many words? Two or three? Two. 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 Goggly eyes. What about these eyes? Are they goggly? No. no. Not goggly. No. Teacher, no eyes. No eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what about the size? Are they goggly, big, small? Small. Very small. Oh, maybe small. Yeah. Listen, we say tiny. 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 tiny eyes. Tiny eyes. It's got tiny eyes. It's, it's got, got tiny, tiny eyes. eyes. How many words? Two. Two. Very good. What's this letter? I. I. And I. this? E. Y. 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 Yes. Tiny. I. 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 Tiny. I. Tiny. I. Tiny. I. Tiny. Very good. What about this nose? Mm. Crooked. 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 It's a crooked nose. Let's say mm -hmm. all together. Crooked, crooked, nose. crooked nose. nose. It's got a crooked nose. It's got, it's got a, a crooked, crooked nose. nose. Oh, it's got Bravo. a crooked nose. How many words? Three. 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 What is this? C. And this? K. Very good. How many letters? O? 
Two. 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 Very good. Good students. What about this nose? Is it a crooked nose? It's no. A it's a flat nose. Oh, it's, it's a, a flat, flat nose. Flat nose. It's Three. got a flat nose. It's, it's got, got a flat, flat nose. nose. Yeah, a flat nose. Okay. A flat nose. A flat nose. It's got a flat nose. How many letters? Uh, oh, sorry, how many words? Three. 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 It's got a flat nose. It's, it's got, got a flat, got a flat, flat nose. nose. Very good. Bravo. Now, look what we have. What's this say? Wavy hair. Wavy hair. hair. Yeah. What's this? Goggly eyes. 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 What's this eyes? Tiny eyes. Tiny eyes. Tiny eyes. A flat nose. A flat, a flat nose. 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 A bold head. A, a, a crooked crook nose. 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 Have you noticed? I didn't say a word. Now I have the picture, no words, and I want to ask you, do the same. What's this again? Crook, a crook, a crook, crook nose. nose. And tiny eyes. Tiny, tiny eyes. Tiny eyes. Tiny tiny eyes. Oh, it's tiny not eyes. eyes. Hmm. Tiny. Goggle eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. Goggly eyes. It's got goggly eyes. It's got goggly eyes. Bold hat. It got a bold hat. Bravo, bravo. Very good. A flat nose. A flat nose. It has got a flat nose. Wavy hair. Wavy. Very good. It's got. It's got. And we practice. Can you say the sentence? It's got. It's got wavy hair. It's got wavy hair. Mira. It's got a bald head. Oksana. It's got a crooked it's... nose. And? And it's tiny eyes. Tiny yes, very eyes. good. And tiny eyes. Fantastic. Okay. If your students don't remember here, you can show these words again. Okay. And now I have this. Three mockers. I have three different colors. Look, I got what this color? Blue. Blue. And this one is he's got. He's got. He's got. He's got. Is it a boy or a girl? A boy. A boy. A boy. What about the red one? It's she's got. He's got. She's got. A boy or a girl? A girl. A girl. A girl. A girl. And the green one. It's got. It's got. It's got. It's got. Is it a boy or a girl? Maybe yeah, animals. Both so, of so them. Potato. 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 It's very interesting. Potato. So it's it's got. It's got. It's got. Good. Now I say, hmm, <clears throat> wavy hair, Kate. Mm -hmm. She's got wavy hair. Oh, so many Kates. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Olga, uh, wavy hair. Uh, he's got wavy hair. Bravo. Svetlana, goggly eyes. It's got goggle eyes. Goggly? Goggly eyes? Goggly, sorry. Goggly eyes. Did it's got goggly eyes. Bravo, bravo. Very good. Same. Now, have a look here. Okay. It's got. Repeat. Got. 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 She's got. got. She's, She's got. 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 Okay. She's got goggly eyes. She's got, She's got, got goggly, goggly eyes. eyes. He's got. He's, He's got. got. He's got. He's got goggly eyes. He's, He's got, got goggly eyes. eyes. It's got. It's, it's got, got goggly eyes. It's got goggly eyes. It's got goggly eyes. We have a flat nose. Repeat. A flat, a flat, flat nose. nose. And a bald head. A bald head. head. Again, a little tip for you as the teacher. Why I have chosen this goggly eyes, a flat nose, and a bald head? What do you think? Different parts of body. And uh, plural singular. Plural singular. Very good. And, yeah, and articles. Mm -hmm. Articles, yeah, because my students, uh, they say uh, a wavy hair. Yes, so I want mm -hmm. to practice this three with the article without the article. And a bald head, again, one more thing. Why here? Maybe because bald. Bald head. Yeah, practice bald. Bald, 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 bald. Uh, Goggly eyes. Pronunciation. Pronunciation, yes. Yeah. So these are probably... Typical mistakes from the students. They say googly, not goggly. Yeah. Okay, so it's here a flat nose, a bald head, mm -hmm. because you want to practice an article. You can change here, depends what your students say. Okay, probably wavy hair, not wavy hair. Yeah, double yeah. and uh, V. 
Now, let's practice. Alexandra, say your sentence. Um, she's got a flat no, nose. He's, Look he's, at me. Uh -huh. He's got a bald head. Very good. Svetlana? It's got a flat nose. Very good. Oksana? She's got, got, she's got a flat nose. Okay. Kate? He's got goggly eyes. Vera? It's got a flat nose. Very good. Thank you very much. Brilliant now, ideas. Look, look what I've got. I've got a handout. Okay. And look at the picture. Look at this nose. Is mm -hmm. it flat or crooked? Crooked. 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 He's got crooked a crooked nose. nose. Mm -hmm. So my students, nose. we demonstrate, I do it together. And then I ask students to do individually. And then after that, check in pairs and then check with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now he's got a bald hat. Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah. yeah. Got a bald hat. He's got wavy hair. She's yeah. got wavy hair. Mm -hmm. She's got wavy hair. It's got goggly eyes. So we check. Yeah, mm -hmm. the pictures. Now, have a look here. We are going to remember that we're going on a potato mm -hmm. festival. So we are going to create our own potato for a potato festival. Mm -hmm. Let's try to do it together. I'm going to switch the presentation now because I want to do it together with you, okay, to demonstrate how it looks in the classroom. I demo the task, so we do it together with the students. <clears throat> so this is our potato. What do you want? Wavy hair or a bald head? Wavy, wavy. wavy hair. Wavy hair, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wavy hair. Good. Oh, come on. Now, tiny eyes or goggly eyes? Go, 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 go. You're just typical. <laughs> and their teacher, everyone go with goggly eyes. Okay. One eye or two eyes? Two, two eyes. Two. two eyes, two. A flat nose or a crooked nose? A flat. A flat. A crooked nose. A flat. A flat nose. A flat. Okay, I've heard the word flat Both. nose. Both. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay. And uh -oh. a big mouse or a small mouse? A big mouse. A big mouse. A big mouse. A big mouse. Okay. Here again, you can play with the students how many, with T's, without the T's. Uh, how many T's do you want? One, two, three. Okay. Oops. Sorry. So it's like this. And now listen. My potatoes got. Ah, the task was to underline as well or circle. So we've got wavy hair, yeah. goggly, goggly eyes, goggly eyes, eyes, a flat nose, eyes, a flat a nose, a big nose, 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 a big mouse, a big mouse. Big mouse. Now, my potatoes got wavy hair, goggly eyes, a flat nose, and a crooked nose, and a big mouse. What about your potato? And my students, they draw their potatoes individually first, okay? And then I ask them, once they're ready, probably um, the drawing process where they circle or underline and draw here on the pink oval is going to be something like two minutes. Again, don't ask them. Be very specific with the timing. Very limited, okay? This is very fast. This is still preparation. So don't stay here for a long time, for a long time. And then my students need to pronounce in this phrase. They need to say that. So I ask them to stand up in the classroom or if it is online, I ask them to go into the uh, breakout rooms and they can change the breakout room so they can mingle. It's a little bit more complicated when you teach online. Once you're in the classroom, they just stand up, go with their paper, and I ask them to check whether they have the same or different with other students. How do I do this? I ask a student, for example, Oksana, yeah? I ask, uh, come, come to the board. Look, Oksana, they show that I read. My potato's got wavy hair. You, Oksana, give me an example, please. My potatoes what? got tiny eyes. No. Okay. About a bald head. A bald head. Okay. If Oksana says, my potatoes got tiny eyes, 
But my potatoes got goggly eyes. Mm, no. Okay. And I go to another student. I ask Sasha, for example. Sasha, my potatoes got goggly eyes. You? And Sasha says, my potatoes got goggly eyes. I say, oh, good. Tick. And I show to the students that I put a tick. Now, let's go. Talk to your partners. We, they know that. And they start talking to each other, checking how many ticks they've got every time they put a tick. So they mingle, 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 something like four or five minutes, depending how many students you have there. Then we sit down. And this is what we do next. We actually write that sentence down. My potato has got, this version on the left is for the senior students, for stronger students. This paper is folded, yeah, folded, so that my uh, strongest students, they don't see the picture, so they use their memory writing down the words. The weakest students, they unfold the paper, they see the whole paper, and they simply copy the words from the picture to the sentence, like this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Again, uh, this is a graded task, yeah? Where your students, you cater for stronger and weaker students. Finally, we are ready to create our real potato. <laughs> So I bring potatoes to the classroom. My students choose their potatoes. Then I give them the mockers and they start drawing. Let's see whether you can see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I made yeah. it with uh, my potato, sorry. <laughs> it's not that bright as the one on the picture. So I use the white marker, not the black marker. Okay, to draw it. Here again, probably you're going to have other questions like, teacher, can I add arms? Yes, you can. Can I get la, 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 something like the extra? Yes, you can, okay? Because this is creativity task. You can't limit your students a lot. And if you have students like um, with creativity like this size, okay, not very, not very creative people, they're probably going to repeat what they have uh, written on the previous handout, yeah? Wavy hair, goggly eyes, big mouths, two noses, yeah? Like these things. And again, when you see that they are ready, you can ask them, can you add more things? And if they want, they can. If they're happy, it's okay. Now, those who are ready, if you have time, you can ask them to write the description down. What is going to be? My potatoes got tiny eyes, small nose, and wavy hair. Bravo. Very good. Excellent. They have written it. And uh, then what happens next? We are ready. We are on a potato festival. If I had the time and they have it in a written form on the paper plate, then we're going to have it like a gallery walk. We actually stand up, go put them, those plates with the potatoes, real potatoes, yeah, like this. In the classroom, probably on the front uh, table, and we go on round round C, and my students can present their potatoes, or we can just read. Depends on the students whether I want them to speak up or probably be quiet if they are too excited and just read, practice reading skills as well. If I don't, ha I didn't have time for writing. Probably I'm going to finish like this. We are on a potato festival. Present your. Potato. Potato. Yes. The stage is yours. And my students say, come uh, at the front and say, hello, my name is Sasha. This is my potato. My potatoes got goggly eyes, a flat nose, and the big mouth, and the wavy hair. Congratulations. When your students do this, you actually prepare something like certificates, if you have. If you don't want, you can just say that. Ooh, fantastic. Well done, Sasha. Your potato is the most, has got the waviest hair. Or probably, Ivan, your potato has got the most crooked nose. Okay? The gogliest something, eyes. The gogliest eyes, yes, something like that. If you say the best, 
the best way to become, I don't understand what's that. It's not measurable, yeah? But it's like the biggest, the tiniest. You can actually play with different different um, forms of potatoes. You know, when you go uh, to the garden, yeah, and you have the potato, they're not flat and nice. Yeah. That can be with small potatoes as well, yeah. Probably your students are going to be creative and add a piece of costume. So you can say the most creative, the, be the most beautiful, the biggest, the smallest. So try to avoid uh, criteria like uh, best, good, um, something that is uh, judging. So you don't judge, yeah? You are more specific. And again, you find uh, only positive things. What makes this your potato specific, special, and beautiful, yeah? Positive. And finally, we dance. Four bananas. Go bananas. Go bananas. Go, go, go. Form the corn. Form, form the corn. Peel, peel. And form, form the corn. You're going to listen to the song later, okay, once you have the recording. So, uh, because you will have the link for the song. So why, again, why I had uh, this song? Because this is, you know, we, we can move a little bit, we can dance in the classroom. And this is form potato, form, form potato, peel potato, mash potato, yeah, like this thing. So the word potato is involved. And this is for you, my dear teachers, as well. Remember, I told you that I'm going to ask you the question, how can we verify this lesson? Can you use other food? Yeah. Why, Why not? not? We can have. Can we have a banana festival? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Apple, a carrot, a, a carrot, a corn, a carrot, corn, and an orange. <laughs> yes, a toy, a toy a festival. Pear, a pear. Yeah, go yeah. with radish. Radish actually. Radish. What hair? Mm -hmm. Pumpkin nuts. Yeah. Students like uh, monsters. Uh -huh. Pumpkin. Yes, yes, yes. Pumpkin. Oh, yeah. Prepare yeah. the pumpkin. Pumpkin. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, this is actually where well, this is the favorite part. Uh, some of the teachers tell me, Natalia, we can start with the beetroot, then carrot, then potato, then onion. And we can actually finish with all these things. Who can wash the salad? <laughs> Who can wash the salad? I was like, ah, oh, looks like cannibalism a, a little bit, but uh, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the teachers told me, like, oh, we can imagine that these are Russians. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you want, please do. So, I mean, I don't know your students, but if it's going to cater to your students and satisfy your students, please do it. Whatever benefit the lesson, really. Now, um, any mistakes here? Probably you've noticed. Eyes, eyes, a very hair. Eyes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah hair is a good thing. Well, actually, yeah, it was a wavy hair. Eyes, <laughs> yeah. correct. correct. Yeah, it's correct. In this yes. picture, yeah. it's correct. Yeah. So it's a good idea before you start actually correcting because I was like, I approached the student. I didn't look at the potato. I mean. And I started like, um, a wavy hair, it's like wavy hair, we have a lot of hair. And she was like, no, I've got one. They are Cossacks, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it is correct here. Okay. <laughs> so be careful with what you are correcting, actually. Be very, very specific. But tiny eyes, yes, and the small no, yes. And I wrote it here for you just to um, go through this stage, like error correction, but... In reality, my students, they didn't have any mistakes. You know why? Because the lesson was properly scaffolded. So they had uh, enough practice. We didn't distract from the topic. We focused only on these things. We started with the word level, sentence level. We tried it. Remember, hand out my potatoes got. So I copied the word. And then finally, that was like a drafting. Yeah, if we speak about the writing lesson. So I drafted, my potatoes got, and finally we have it beautifully written. 
And most of my students, they were actually looking at the handout and copying from the handout. So if your students have any mistakes during that stage, when they write my potatoes got here, they're not going to have any. And now, this is the end of the lesson. Let's discuss the stages. So we started from the leading with setting up the context. Agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. While I'm actually, this is the task for you now to start thinking of the good question that you can ask me because we are approaching the end of the webinar and there is the certificate waiting for you. Yeah. Okay. Ah, come on. You can't see it. It's blurry. Ah, okay. We can see it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a gift certificate. Uh, let's go. So we set up the context with the leading that we are going on a potato festival. In reality, I even had on the board, uh, I draw the uh, uh, islands and I wrote the potato festival. I asked my students, where are we going? Which country is this? They told me Spain. Okay, I have written Spain. And then we had a boat with all the students on the board or on the board, okay? And then I moved, with each activity, I moved the boat closer to the island. And when they were misbehaving or distracting, guess what? The boat was moving Backward. backwards, exactly. So it was very visual that here we go, we are on the potato, on the island, and here is the time for a potato festival. Then we played hot potato here yeah, with my potatoes got activating review, review parts of the body yeah the vocabulary they already know eyes mouth nose probably okay you can have here not necessarily this potato it can be a picture and you pass the picture and they say one sentence about the picture this was the new vocabulary presentation this means the adjective because my students, they already knew all parts of body, but remember that every lesson should be finished with new vocabulary. So my students leave the classroom, learn something new. The next one was a recognition stage, W level, W, U, W, yes, W level, means that we practice word level. And finally, we move to sentence level. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Again, why did I use gestures? TPR. TPR. TPR, yes. For kinesthetic learners and to minimize my teaching talking time. I can just show them. Yeah. And they simply remember during the lesson when they're going to have a mistake saying baby here. Okay. So you remind your students it's good. And, ah, it's good, baby here. Okay, teacher. Grammar awareness raising, it wasn't absolutely new for them, uh, the structure has got. The main focus of the lesson was the adjectives. Yeah, so we just revise she, he, and it, it's got. We didn't revise any have you, and we didn't revise the question form. It was just, it's got, positive sentence. Practice, control practice, uh, and what's a good idea with uh, different colors of the time. Yes, three markers is one of my favorite activities. Ah. When you're playing, have the later on, next time, when we, uh, next lesson, we will probably practice have what, we, they. And then I'm going to show them different colors. We are going to go, for example, with pink and light green, yeah, or probably, I don't know, uh, lemongrass. Yeah, magenta and lemongrass. And this is going to be have, has, have, has. It's not going to be he, she, eat. Okay? Uh, later on, when you practice like uh, present simple or past simple, you can go with past simple, present simple. And you, you give them a sentence. So probably present simple, uh, present continuous, past continuous. It's a good idea, again, to mm -hmm. use markers to visualize for the students, color coding is very important for the students. And in this case, they remember the grammar structures better. It's easier for them to remember. And finally, we go to the final task. So we start preparing for the final task. Preparation, oral preparation, 
for a, first of all, I demo the task together with the student. Then we have it in the written form. This is like drafting. Yeah, this one is drafting. And here we do correct the mistakes. We ask our students to cross it out, change it, rewrite, because this is our draft paper. Finally, we have preparation of the project. We draw a real potato, okay? Be very specific with the time, four minutes probably maximum. And again, if you, uh, if four is maximum that you can allow during the lesson, probably say three because your students are going to beg for more, okay? Mm -hmm. And finally, you have it like writing, my potatoes got, and the students write a sentence around the potato, uh, uh, potato on a paper uh, mm. plate. Why paper? Because it's more comfortable to write with a, a felty pen or a marker. If you take a plastic uh, plate, it's not very good because it's plastic, you know, it's going, the ink is going to be everywhere and it's going to stick to the hands. So it's so beautiful. It's eco-friendly as well. And this is how they carry potato home on a plate. We have forgotten the mingling activity. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It was here. Again, yeah, one before we, uh, that's why it was oral, because we stood up, thank you very much, Oksana. We practiced that, we verbalized that, so we are ready to introduce our potato to describe it in an oral form. Mm -hmm. So it is a preparation for oral stage. This one is a preparation for a written stage. Mm -hmm. And finally, feedback on content, what my students have actually prepared. Yeah, your potato is the, the most beautiful, the biggest, the most amazing, fantastic, blah, blah, blah. They don't need to understand these words. Don't teach them these words. Okay, just say, that's it. <laughs> and feedback on language. If your students have any mistakes, please focus on them. I didn't have this stage because it was properly scaffolded. So the objectives of our today's webinar, minimum preparation, hands-on activities. How we achieve that? Yeah. Fantastic. Remember three markers, and you can play the whole lesson with this. Yeah. After this, you can actually ask them, now write down your sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can write it down. Techniques on how to inspire and support students' communication when they after completing the table, when you push them to stand up and check in pairs. Do you have the same or different? Put a tick. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. have to speak. I'm waiting for a question here about this. Probably somebody is going to ask me about this activity and how to accommodate to a mixed ability classroom with the same task. Remember, my mm -hmm. students, stronger students, they don't look, they seem to be quite. Remember, all the paper, uh, the weaker students, they simply copy. And when they create their potatoes, once those who are ready can start writing, not necessarily everyone will finish with writing. They can simply draw and say that, okay? This is again, the same activity, uh, but everyone received the plate, okay? Can so I add, actually a mingling activity also supports weaker students because so, uh, while sharing, they can easily uh, um, pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see uh, how to improve, uh, check uh, the mistakes. So it also... Mm -hmm. Because they're going to repeat that phrase many times. That this is, is like it. drilling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is a meaningful drilling. Yeah. So now it's the time for your questions to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming here. Questions? Uh, yeah, I think we have to remind, oh, okay. uh, thank you, Natalia, <laughs> the, the teachers. I that, have a question, uh, sorry. Natalia, yeah. I have a question. Please, please go. Uh, uh, if we speak about the correcting, uh, lucky you that your students uh, have got any mistakes, but yeah. if they have the mistakes, when um, uh, when is it better to correct them? 
while they are writing so go in and see because if they have um ex uh, if they have mistakes on their writing paper uh, plates and then they start to present for example they mm -hmm. will continue those uh, they will repeat that mistake so thank you very uh, at much which stage of the lesson should we correct the mistake mm -hmm. thank you very much olga for this question it's a very good question so uh, it depends what mistakes we have in oral form or in written. So probably you've noticed when we were playing with the markers, some of the teachers said uh, googly or goggle, yeah? So you immediately correct that because this is the just the practice stage. You have just introduced the words. And if you skip this, unfortunately, your students are going to repeat the same at the final production. So immediate correction during the practice stage. When your students start writing, my potato has got on a handout, not on a plate. Again, once you approach them, when they are writing, you're not sitting and drinking coffee. Of course, you come, monitor, check, and say, have a look here, have a look here. You don't say it's wrong. You can actually ask them to unfold the paper, have a look here, is it the same? So that you actually support your students so they see it and they can copy it. I would, again, put it on the slide. On, um, I didn't have the PowerPoint presentation at my real lesson, but you can write the words on the board or have that slide with the words written. So it's going to be a visual support, visual aid for your students, and they will copy again. Uh, strong, uh, weaker students will copy, stronger won't look at them, okay? They don't need it, they remember. and. When your students still have the mistake written on a plate, again, after they have finished writing, probably come again and have a look and point that after they have finished. I mean, they, they are going to finish. Yeah, it's written there. So you see it's written. Ad address that. Please address. And when they have the mingling activity and you see that they are making the mistakes here, we don't correct. We are waiting for them to finish because we can't stop the communication. So they are ready. They sit down. They are on their seats. And you can set, put it on the board. Or you can ask it, to do, do, to do, do. What do we say? To do, do, to do, do. And then you say, ask Masha, Vasya, and then Olenka, who actually made that mistake. Did I answer your question? Very good. There was, I think, one more question. Julia, have you spotted it in the chat? Yeah, it's a question from Ima. Uh, she's asking, can we sing a song in the middle of the lesson? Ah, good question. If you have a song with the same words, with the same target vocabulary, yes, please do. If you have something like head and shoulders, knees and toes, mm, do you have these words needed for your lesson? No, it's not real. Um, so why should we sing it? Remember? Mm -hmm. Again, that peel potato, you know, form potato. It's just, remember, it's at the end of the lesson. This is just fun for a potato festival. This is what happens on the real potato, on the real festival. We dance. My students don't need to sing, uh, to sing those words at the song. Form the onion, form, form the onion, cry the onion, cry, cry the onion, and then they hug or something like that. Not necessarily. If they want, please. If they don't, it's okay. They can just dance and have fun. So it depends what's your target language. Yeah, thank you, Natalia, for answering the question. Okay, you should ask questions because like we are oh, actually going to choose the winner of the of the certificate. Uh, for the teacher who would like to win the course. Maybe the first because too. actually I'm going to have my uh, lesson at a quarter past five here. So I'm going to leave you. Uh, okay, so my question for you, Natalia. Tell me please, so um, you are teaching your students or pupils. And tell me please, uh, just uh, did you have such a situation or maybe that your student like taught you anything? Or of course, it happens like every single time. Every single lesson, they teach me something new. It goes about uh, methodology as well. I mean, I, I learn my lessons that something is wrong. 
going wrong during the lesson, so I learn these things. Or they ask uh, good questions about vocabulary. It's like, а як сказати отакі картошкою, такі круглий нос? Let's Google. <laughs> Let's find out together. Since I'm now teaching um, B2 level students, oh, believe me, every single lesson is with some, about something, about vocabulary. They share the content. They teach me new songs. Uh, they teach me new uh, films, new tips uh, for social media. So it's real life lessons. It's English lessons. And this is a methodology lesson. Thank you very much, Vera. Thank you. I have to leave. Uh, so thank you yeah, very yeah. much. Go, go, go. I really appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, will you share the materials with us? Of course I will. Okay. Uh, what extent do you use L1? What inspires you, Natalia? Oh, so many questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think like we have to now to to give some time limit. Yeah, we have let let's have like five more uh, minutes for to answer the que the questions. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> yeah, you. exactly. Uh, remember that practice makes not perfect, but permanent. Okay. So practice those things. Remember that you rock and you rule in the classroom and talking about the materials. Again, uh, these are my contact details, or you can simply go to my Telegram channel now and you can find the handouts already being uploaded to the Telegram channel. And I'm answering the questions. To what extent do you use a one? I minimized it as much as possible. So during the lesson, I can only translate separate words when I see that the students actually don't understand fully the meaning. I can simply translate it into uh, Ukrainian. The rest, no. It's a lot of body language involved with primary students. I show them, look, read, listen to me, stand up, talk together. I love silent way. Try it one time. Again, on my Telegram channel, you can watch the webinar on silent method, how to be silent during the lesson. And this will help you how to use your body language more effectively. What was the second lesson uh, question? Uh, what inspires you? Uh, what inspires me? Oh, typical question. Common question, I was saying like this. Look, inspiration is all around. I can be inspired by uh, a marker that I see, a tree, a butterfly, you know, I can be inspired by my kids, my husband, my friends, by you, by anything. There is nothing specific, mostly people, mostly people. When I, when we communicate, we, we share the ideas like, oh, I've got a spark, you know, sparkle. And it's like, oh, I'm going to use this, like this. Okay. Nobody asked me a very good question about mingling activity, how to get a link to the Telegram. It's on the screen, scan the code, scan the QR code. What's your favorite reflective activity? Exit ticket. Mm -hmm. I have it like this, I show, uh, this is what I finished the lesson with. I have the flashcards from the presentation in front of me. I ask my students to line up, show them and ask them, what's this? They say, goggly eyes, good, pass, bye-bye. <laughs> Next one, uh, what's this? Wavy hair, good. What's this? Flat nose, goodbye. To the end of the line. Why? Because it is a eh, flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great, thank you. Great. Uh, what, what is your favorite course book for young learners? It's a provocative question. <laughs> because I work for Express Publishing, I can't tell you anything about other publications. <laughs> um, look, it's not about the book. This is what, again, Olena taught us. You are teaching the students. You can have million activities just from yeah. one picture from the course book. I like the course books that are... Um... But we can adapt. Oh. Yes, 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 adapt. I like the course books that are, you know, like scaffolded, so you don't have any extra vocabulary included, meaning that you start with parts of body like eyes, ears, nose, and then you, in the book, you are introduced the song Head and Shoulders. Why? Because we practice eyes and ears. And finally, please draw a monster and you have legs, arms, and body. So this doesn't, you know, match in my head. This I don't like. 
So I like the ones that are, you know, like flow, growing, going from one stage to another stage, like this. I like the pictures in the books, like this. Okay, I think the last, yeah, the last question. Let the last the question. Last question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, the last two. Uh, a favorite website. There is no favorite website. I use, I mean, there is probably nothing I can recommend because I don't use website. I just use minimum activities. I like, you know, zero preparation. I, I like using what I have in the classroom. And finally, what's your favorite activity for the physical break? Stand up and do something. I don't sing and dance with the students. I put the uh, handouts on a table, ask them, stand up, go and take it. This is a physical break. <laughs> like this. They, they like Simon Says. Simon Says is wonderful. <laughs> yes, yeah, touch your yeah. nose, blah, 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 like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can easily put the handout at the end of the class and ask them, stand up, go and take it, and then come back and sit down. It is a physical break. And, and why? While they are mingling and doing, a, they they don't sit; they just moving. So it's also yeah. physical exercises. Yeah. Um. So probably, if we need to choose the very oh, no, can, no, I, can I interrupt you? Not yet. Yes, okay, yes. because they will leave and miss all the important information I have to say. Yes. So okay, uh, Natalia, I will give you like a few minutes to choose the the most interesting question. Okay? okay, and while Natalia is choosing, I also have some important information for you. So uh, Natalia and Great University, or uh, Great University and Natalia are uh, actually. Uh, having one more raffle it's on our facebook and instagram uh, so if you scan the qr code on the left it will take you to uh, to the facebook post uh, with all the information about the raffle and if you scan the one which is on the right it's an instagram post uh, mm -hmm. so what you have to do you have to subscribe to great university and Natalia's accounts. Uh, if you prefer Facebook, do it on Facebook. If you prefer Instagram, do it on Inst Instagram. And uh, uh, below this post, you have to tag two of your friends' teachers and uh, write the name, the title of the course that you would like to get from a great university. The title, so there are going to be three courses that we are going to raffle. The first one is one more course on online tools for English language teachers. The second one is for those of you who teach uh, beginner uh, levels or young learners. And this is the course by Lydia Sivak. It's also our uh, trainer from Great Education Center using flashcards in ELT. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very practical course. It has a lot of videos of demos and activities uh, that you can do in your classrooms with flashcards. Uh, and uh, the third course is the course on, uh, it's called The Motivated Teen. And this name has been mentioned, I think, a uh, dozen of times today. It's a course by Olena Lesetra. And if you are teaching teenagers, it will be super useful for you. So online tools using flashcards or motivated teens, uh, scan the QR codes now. Uh, <clears throat> I will share the links to the post in the chat box too. And uh, do the things that I mentioned, subscribe to Great University, not Great Education Center, not Great Teacher Training, Great University. This is the online platform. Natalia Leshko, uh, tag two friends. If you don't know how to tag, you just have to use that, uh, we call it at uh, mm -hmm. symbol, Sabaka in Ukrainian, yes, and tag your friend. <laughs> Uh, two of your friends and uh, write the name of the course, comment below the post and uh, uh, you have to do this by noon tomorrow, mm -hmm. it's Friday, right, uh, the mm -hmm. 5th of April, uh, so you still have uh, plenty of time even uh, if you are sleepless at night, just uh, serve Instagram and uh, Facebook and do that. And uh, the, the results of the raffle, they will be published uh, on our uh, pages on Facebook and Instagram at 5 30 p.m. tomorrow. Absolutely. All mm -hmm. right. Good. I, I have already done it. I did it last week, and uh, I am uh, uh, your uh, subscriber, Natalia. Cool. And, Good. I am in, and uh, I like uh, 
lessons uh, from Elena Lisita because now I'm studying uh, in. Oh, great... cool! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> not, yes. Thank you for the feedback. promoting Elena, you know. Yeah, Elena, Elena Lisita is the best teacher in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would strongly you. recommend you uh, copy every single word she says, you know, remember? Yes, yes, I copy. She's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> A real certificate. And the most meaningful question probably was about error correction. So it goes to Olga Katlichkova. My yeah, computer. congratulations! <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I okay, think you, uh, you do agree with me. Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree with you completely. Okay, uh, uh, Olga, can I ask you to write me now directly? Uh, if you go to the participants list, you will see great educate, great teacher training. It's me. Just uh, okay. I have sorry, I have already uh, done all that. Just on the second day of uh, Natalia uh, shared that on her uh, shared the uh, announcement of this <clears throat> webinar on her page. So I have already done that. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about like you are the winner. So you got the gift certificate from Natalie now. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah, and I need your contact details. Okay, let's do it like okay. this because okay. I will, mm -hmm. yeah, so I have to message you. You will receive a message in the chat okay. right now. So uh, okay. Where where shall I give you? Where shall I write my here in the chat? Oh, can you see the message from me on the chat? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Get the logistics here. Yeah. Hey everyone, thank you very much for participating today. Again. Ah, yes, I see. Okay. Thank okay, you. just type thank your you email too. there because I thank don't want gosh. to lose you. Thank you, everybody. Thank bye. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay. And let me remind you guys that you will get your certificates for this webinar in your personal cabinets. Uh, I will do my best to deliver them to you tonight. I just have to upload, uh, to wait for the Zoom to process the video recording and upload everything in your personal cabinets. So probably like after 7 p.m. they are going to be there. And then you will take your short, uh, yeah, thank you, Ola, I've got your email. And I will send you all the information regarding the, uh, the price that you've got. Okay. Uh, and uh, the certificates and the tests are going to be there, there together with the... Uh, together with the recording. And uh, you know where to get materials. So um, uh, either on Natalia's uh, Facebook or Instagram, yeah, if you like to get those uh, there. And Natalia, thank you very much. Uh, you know, uh, your webinar made me miss my uh, Thai school where I was teaching primary students. So you want uh, to yeah. go back to school? Oh, uh, no, no, I want to, to go back to <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> okay. I see. <laughs> and to my primary students, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. This was really super fruitful, super helpful uh, with a lot of ideas. And I hope our teachers enjoyed that, that so much too. Mm. So thank you guys for joining us today. Um, everyone have a nice uh, spring uh, evening. And uh, yeah, safe, and we love you. <laughs> and bye-bye. Until next time. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.